Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to create your own actor group step by step, as well as explore the differences between bases, presets, and random group types. If you're not yet familiar with actor groups, please check out the Getting Started tutorial to get some background on the basics. Okay, let's take a look at base groups first. You can find the Create Actor Group under the Create menu and begin by dragging in actors from the Content Manager to your scene after which they will appear under Group Structure. From there, you can apply your own motions to the actors and adjust their orientation and position to your own preference. It's recommended to use the local axis when making these changes. You may need to play back a number of different times to ensure that the orientation of the actors remains consistent throughout the duration. Under Group Structure, you'll find both actors and motions, and certain motions contain tags that can be matched to the corresponding actors. When you've got everything properly assigned, you can go ahead and hit Save to save to an iActor group format. In this next example, I'm going to create another base group containing a bench prop. Naturally, this time I want to apply seated motions to both of my actors and bring in my bench prop as well. Again, it's important to refine your actor positioning and orientation to match with the bench prop. Once we're satisfied, we can once again save everything, including the prop, to an iActor group file. A base group is a collection of actors, motions, and props, and they can be reapplied at any time by clicking and dragging the iActorGroup file into your scene. Let's look next at how to create preset groups. In the same actor group settings window, you'll see the preset option at the top. With that selected, I now have the option to import the previous actor groups I just created, and you'll see the actor pool populate with the relevant actors, complete with tags. I can click and drag in more actors from the content manager and add them to the actor pool, then save it as an actor group preset. When I apply this preset in the future, it will come up with the randomize actor group window and both previous presets will be found in the dropdown. Here, you can click on Randomize, which will randomly choose actors that were previously added to the actor pool before we saved. I can then once again apply that same iActor group file, and this time choose the second embedded preset, which is the couple taking pictures. Naturally, I can also randomize the actors for that as well. Lastly, let's look at creating random actor groups by selecting random at the top of our actor group settings window. Once again, you will need to bring in some actors from the content manager and establish the basic position, orientation, and number of actors you want in this group, along with some animations to be added to the motion pool. Again, be aware that you can add additional actors and motions to their respective pools in addition to the ones that you are currently utilizing in your scene. Some actors also contain Material Plus data that allows them to randomize the appearance of their clothing. In the Content Manager, you can find these under the Material Plus category. When you see a Texture Option icon in the Actor Core page, this means that the actor contains Material Plus data and can assign random colors to your actor's outfits for more variety. To ensure that these are utilized, you can load them up in the Material Plus settings for each actor. There are also a bunch of motions that are meant to be used in combination with various props like cell phones and coffee cups. To assign an accessory to those motions, simply use the motion settings and drag them in from the content manager or explorer window just like we did with the material plus files. Once you have everything all set, you can go ahead and save it as a completely new random actor group. Be aware that there is also a random group angle setting that will randomly assign the angle the actor group is applied if it is selected. 
Once we have that saved, we can then reapply it at any time. We can randomize both the actors and the motions by selecting the respective checkboxes. Lastly, there is an option to source from all available actor core actors, which will scan your content library for every actor core character you have and source your actors from there. Be aware that this will bring in actors that you didn't previously add in the actor group settings. That's really all there is to customizing your actor groups and the three different types that you can create. Actor groups are a fantastic way to quickly populate your scene with predetermined templates of natural looking background actors that can utilize every motion in your motion library with a huge variety of appearances as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.